What is the difference between a chemical reaction and a physical reaction? That's what we're going to talk about today. A physical reaction undergoes a physical change. Well, that's great, but what is a physical change? It's only a change in form. It does not change the chemical formula. A physical change does not change the chemical formula. Let's look at some examples of physical changes. So a change in its shape. If I were to mold Play-Doh or if I were to break a mirror. Now sometimes I'll hear grade school teachers say that if you can't undo it uh, then it's chemical. That's not exactly true because look I can't very easily put this mirror back together but that's definitely still a physical change. Each piece of this is still glass. A physical change can also be a change in phase. That's a move from solid to liquid to gas. Now, most students are familiar with water. Ice to a liquid to steam here on Old Faithful. That's a physical change. It's still H2O. I see a lot of students get the question wrong when we move it to something that's not water. If I were to talk about molten iron and solid iron, the chemical formula is still the same. It's still iron. So it doesn't matter if it changes its form, but the chemical formula doesn't change, it's a physical change. Also, going into solution is a physical change. The water does not ever bond with the sugar when we make Kool-Aid. Same thing is true with salt water, right? The salt never actually bonds to the water. We know this because if we were to make rock candy, if we had sugar water and we let the water evaporate, the sugar would attach itself to the string in the center. That's how you could make homemade rock candy. A chemical reaction is different. It forms a new chemical substance. Let's look at an example. Here we have two molecules of hydrogen. You can see one, two molecules of hydrogen, and one molecule of oxygen. They're going to undergo a chemical reaction which yields, which is what this arrow means, two molecules of water plus some energy. So let's see how that happens. So one hydrogen with one oxygen and another hydrogen, that makes one water molecule, one oxygen, and then two hydrogens bond with it, and we have two water molecules. You can see that whatever we started with, we ended with. That is called the conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says that mass cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So if we were to put that into more simple terms, mass of reactants equals the mass of the products. So when we look back here, what we started with before the reaction are known as the reactants. What we ended with are known as the products. The reactants react together and produce the products. The mass of the reactants whatever we started with, has to equal the mass of the products. Look at a few examples of some chemical reactions. We like to say these are the four most common that you're going to see on the test. Rusting, rotting, burning, baking. Rusting, rotting, burning, baking. We see a bus rusting. We see a piece of fruit rotting. We see a forest fire. And we see cookies baking. They like to put questions about rusting, rotting, burning, baking on the test. But are those the only types of chemical reactions? Certainly not. Glow sticks glowing, uh, instant cool packs getting cold. There's tons of examples, but they just uh, they don't sound as cool and as easy to remember as rusting, rotting, burning, baking. In summary, physical changes are a change in form only. Changes in shape, changes in phase, it's going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, and going into solution are also examples of physical changes. Chemical changes produce a new substance. A new chemical substance has to be produced. Reactants are what exist before you have a chemical reaction. Reactants react together and they produce products. Products are what are produced after a chemical reaction occurs. The law of conservation of mass says that the mass of the reactants must be equal to the mass of the products. However much you start with is what you have to end with. Nothing can be created. Nothing just appears or disappears. However much you start with is how much you end with. Some common examples of chemical reactions are rusting, rotting, burning, and baking, but there are many, many, many other examples.